Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one? Are you he who is to come? Or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is he who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to behold? A reed shaken by the wind? Why then did you go out? To see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, those who wear soft raiment are in king's houses. Why then did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has risen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of God, of heaven, is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have come to bring the light to show us the way. Help us, O Lord, in this journey through this life to see your work in and among us, to see your coming in our lives and in this world. Let us be connected to your word so that we know the signs of the one who is to come. That we may see your presence and power in the world and share the good news that brings with all we encounter in our daily lives. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, who is our rock and salvation. Amen. Please be seated. It's important to know what you're looking for when you're looking for something, right? The question for us at times, I think, ought to be, what are we seeking? But then, how will we know when it is found? Sometimes things are right in front of our faces without even realizing what we have. I came across a a story recently that kind of illustrated this point. You see, there was a customs officer uh, observing a truck pulling up to the border crossing he was working, and he was suspicious. I I suppose that's, you know, what they're paid to be is suspicious. So he orders the driver out and searches the vehicle. He pulls off the panels, the bumpers, the wheel cases, but finds no contraband. But he's still suspicious, but at a loss to to know where else to search in the vehicle. Finally, finding nothing, he waves the driver right on through. So a week passes, and the same driver shows up. Again, the customs official searches and finds nothing illegal, nothing illicit. And so over the years... The official tries a full body search, x-rays, sonar, anything he can think of. Each week, when the same man drives up with no mysterious cargo, not once could he find one single thing. So reluctantly, each time, the driver would wave, the, uh, the customs official would wave the driver through. Finally... After many years, and the officer is about to retire, the same driver pulls up. I know you're a smuggler, he says. Don't bother denying it. But I'll be darned if I can't figure out what it is you're smuggling. Now, I'm leaving. I'm going into retirement. I can do you no harm. Won't you please tell me what you've been smuggling? 
trucks, the man says. <laughs> Sometimes things are right under our noses and we don't even recognize that fact. Advent is a time for us to refocus our attention on what it is that we are seeking. And to understand clearly when we found it. In our gospel text, of course, John the baptizer hears from prison. He's in prison. John's already put him there. Or the, the king has already put him there. But he hears from prison of the deeds that the Christ has done. So he sends his, his followers, his, his students, his disciples, to ask an important question. Are you the one who is to come? And Jesus' answer, of course, is one of fulfillment. You see, the Old Testament prophets were good at doing precisely what it was that God had invited them to do. To speak his word. And to make it clear what it would be like when the world was restored, when Israel was restored under his Messiah. And so Jesus simply laid out for John and for everyone else what the Messiah would look like and what he will do. The signs had been there all the time, but they had missed. So Jesus is simply referring back to, of all things, of course, the prophet Isaiah, which we read today, making it clear. This is what the Messiah will do. This is what the Messiah will look like. And you will know because the eyes of the blind are opened. The ears of the deaf are unstopped. The lame shall leap like deer. And the tongue of the mute can't hold it in anymore. Jesus is merely confirming for John's disciples the fact of the matter. That what was being sought is now for them found. That's an important point for us to reflect upon as we go deeper and deeper into the Advent season. To ask ourselves now, what is it that we are seeking? Now, of course, when we seek something, there's usually a reason why. We are seeking because that means we don't have something we've identified a need in or for. The idea, the challenge for us is to understand what it is that Jesus brings to us, that he offers for us. And the answer to that, brothers and sisters, is really very simple. It is a simple word, but a challenging concept for us to reflect upon in our lives if we are truly honest with ourselves. And the gift that Jesus brings is great and many. That it can be boiled down to the idea of the salvation, the restoration, the reconciliation that God offers us in his Holy Son. But the reason why we need these things is another thing to reflect upon. And of course, we just said it a minute ago. We are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We need the healing that Jesus brings. All of these things that we see Jesus do are actions of healing and wholeness and restoration. You see, that's what sin does. It breaks us. It tears us down. It doesn't lift us up. It doesn't draw us nearer to one another, and it certainly doesn't draw us nearer to God. So the gift for us in this season is to take a moment and reflect upon what it really is that we are seeking. The world has many opportunities for self-medication, to let us forget the troubles and the challenges of our lives. But that medication... It's not healing. Oftentimes it merely masks the symptoms. The season. This could be a challenging season for us. For many folks who struggle with the loss 
the pain, the division that is so often a part of our lives. Jesus, in this season, comes not to offer us some temporary fix, but eternal wholeness. Far too often what people seek isn't Jesus, but a facade. To seek Jesus means to embrace what he brings, those those things I was speaking of, that healing, that restoration. To desire these things means to recognize the condition, that sin that bogs us down. So we understand and begin to see what it is that Jesus is, who Jesus is, his real identity as God's son. I mean, there, isn't that interesting, that, that curious phrase where, where he says, blessed is he who takes no offense at me? That, that's there for a reason. There, Jesus is telling us something. We think, well, who would take offense at the Messiah? And that's kind of odd, right? But if you stop and think about it, if you go back into chapter 10 of, of Matthew's gospel, we read the concept of the idea of Jesus sending out the 12, and he tells them, preparing them, you know what, some are going to reject you. We know that today as well, that some will reject what it is that Jesus brings, or at least what they think he brings without really knowing the love, the peace, the joy, not only of this season, but of all life itself, the peace that passes all understanding. It's hard to grasp. There were the Pharisees and Sadducees that took offense at him. He healed on the Sabbath. You can't do that. But how about the others who welcomed him as Messiah, but their idea of Messiah was far different from his? You see, sometimes we have our own ideas of what Jesus should be rather than what Scripture and what God's Word reveals about who he truly is. Does he come in power? Does he come with great worldly authority? No. Instead, what does he bring? What is, how does he come? In this season, we stop and reflect on how Christ enters into our worlds in the most humble and unassuming way. Not with great fanfare. There's no paparazzi. There's no media. No, instead, the people that greet him are the most lowly of all in society. And so, when he is revealing himself in his ministry, as John is asking the question... Jesus' response, look what I do. Does it match what the word says? Is there healing? Is there restoration? Is, are the lame restored? Are the, are the mute speaking? Do the, eye, do the eyes of the blind see? Do the ears of the deaf hear? And if the case is that, then the Messiah has come with healing in his wings. You see, part of the problem is We try and fix the challenges of life ourselves. But on our own, we cannot fix the sin, but he can. And that is what Christ has come to do. Indeed, the real problem is is sin, and the solution is Jesus. He has come. He is with us now and promises in order to fulfill the plan of God's salvation for us. And so, we have come to hear about our Savior, about the light of the world and where he can be found and how we can know he is in our midst. We seek Christ. He can be found in water as Grayson and Gavin are about to experience today. He comes in bread and wine which we will all experience this day. The healing, the forgiveness That comes through this meal, through his gift, through him. And he comes in other ways as well. That includes word and prayers and fellowship that we experience in community. The warmth not brought to us by HVAC systems. But instead, through the love of God we share in community. Together. Lifting each other up. Sharing each other's burdens. That is the blessing of being here. 
Like I tell the kids all the time, this is not the church. This is the church. You know, the old, the old idea of, you know, here's a church, here's a steeple. Look inside, see all the people. We are the church, brothers and sisters. And we are the church because Christ is in the midst of us. So as we prepare for the humble coming of Christ in the manger, we celebrate on our journey toward Bethlehem. And this grace, so lavishly bestowed upon us, offers us the healing we need. We don't want to be oblivious to the everyday revelation of Jesus in our midst. We want to know precisely what we are looking for. And we, so we seek Christ where he can be found in his saving word of promise, in this community and fellowship, in the sacraments, in our weakness, and in his healing. And having been refreshed with the things of Christ, in hopeful expectation, we sing of the wondrous things that await his coming again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us take a moment to reflect on God's word and his will for our lives.